Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Um Actually Comics. My name is Tristan, and I'm joined today by Bob. Yes, you are. And it is uh, Um Actually Comics for Wednesday, September 6th. Damn. I really had to think about that, even yeah. though I was checking my watch, because it just had numbers, and I couldn't translate them <laughs> into what month. <laughs> what does that nine mean? Nine. I just don't know. Uh, but now I do know, and uh, yes, this is, weirdly, this feels like a fifth week. Yeah, but last week was the fifth week. It was. And that was this, we didn't even have a podcast. And this is like, this is a nothing burger as well. Uh, I, know, I would disagree with that, but... Uh, oh, well, I mean, there are some good books. There's some great certainly, books. Certainly. There's some books I've been very much looking forward to for quite a while. Plus, DC is back after that t- yes. two months of night terror, True. night nightmares. <laughs> Night, whatever they are. Bedwetting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> night terrors and bedwetting. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about comic books because I, first off, I want to go home because yeah, uh, it's been a long I've, day. I've had multiple uh, incidents of moving things this week, so I need to conserve my energy. I'm going to go back out and rent another U Haul on Wednesday. Yay. That's too many <laughs> incidences of it's, moving things. At my age, hoy. No. Oof, the way too much. Collision. Yes, uh, Glavin, indeed. How about let's talk about this thing called uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, I haven't even been directing here. Let's look at you. Hi there. Yeah, there you go. I'm looking at you, though. Uh, the uh, the uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing he's, Spider-Man he's, number 33. He's taken the pill that makes him a bad guy, and he's being mean to Craven's son. That's very mean. I don't like it. Craven did nothing to deserve that. Well, Craven did, but Craven's, but Craven's son, son didn't do anything to deserve yeah, it. Now, granted, I haven't read too many comics with Craven's son, so maybe he did do some bad it stuff. It seems but. like he hasn't done all that much, but he is stalking around <laughs> Central Park with a giant, with two giant fucking knives. So yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's he's at least doing suspect he, he things. Has at the say. very least, attacked Spider-Man in the past. True. I believe that to be true. Uh, I seem to remember that from one of those things where he was getting his ass kicked all day long. Yes. One of those series that just would not stop beating the shit out of Peter Parker. Uh, I can't remember which one of them it was, but it was one of them recently. It's called Craven's Big Beat the Shit Out of. And it was Craven's uh, <laughs> Day Out. And it was just Craven the Hunter almost falling off skyscrapers and things. Craven the Hunter, a villain I just really. I mean, it's probably because I've read a lot of Tiger comics, but like, I just don't understand the longevity and mileage that Craven the Hunter gets. D- same, ditto. Never don't have, get it. Never have gotten it. Never have understood it. Yeah. They- Except for there's that thing where it's like we like to, as Americans, we like to beat up on Russians, and so it's like, yeah, he's Russian. But like, other than that, I can't think of like why he has this thing. I mean, he's got that weird vest. I mean, Maybe. it's great, except that, I mean, he's already been outdone because the version of him with the Garfield vest is <laughs> so, much so much cooler. <laughs> so I much love cooler. That so much. Um, anyway, what about Sabrina, the Teenage Witch Annual Spectacular? You know, it's cool to see an Archie comic that actually has, like, Harry Lucy art in it and uh, Dan DiCarlo art in it, but it's just reprints of comics that you've probably read before. If you're into Sabrina, it's a good one to get. It's probably uh, fun and you maybe you've never seen those before check them out because harry lucy is one of the classic sabrina artists and certainly dan DiCarlo is the creator of uh sabrina and then there was another story and maybe possibly some other ones wait is that true dan DiCarlo created sabrina drew her in the first one i did not know that i mean i don't know who like dreamt her up in terms of writing but still still i I didn't know that he was the first person that's funny he were interesting that very first sabrina story is reprinted in this annual in fact if you ever wanted to know what it looked like on glossy paper I do. No, now you I can. wanted it so badly to know no, that. Now you can. Uh, now you what can. about Brand Stormers? Did not read it. I did not like My the first new issue. Favorite breakfast cereal. <laughs> Brand Stormers. Brand Stormers. Uh, yeah, I didn't love the first issue, and uh, by that I mean I just kind of didn't like it. And then I didn't read the second one, so I'm off the train of even <laughs> pretending to look at what it's like. I might, maybe next issue. I'll Bob be has like, left the barn. I've I've, fl- I've flown. I've stormed <laughs> I've out. Stormed out of the barn <laughs> in a huff. <laughs> I feel like I've stormed out in a huff from the majority of the Scott Snyder books lately. Yeah, I think the last thing that I enjoyed was Night of the Ghoul, and I yeah, think that was good. That, I think I, I think I was kind of out of there. I 
like that. Sorry, I'm not trying to block my my no, beautiful, you're, beautiful face. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine, Bob. Yay. Um, fine. Let's see. Easy. So we finished with Barnstormer, so we'll take that off of there, and we'll go to, oh, hey, check it out. You're going to be surprised. DC's got a Batman book out, and it's called Batman. I actually like this. I did, too. I thought this was great. That's good. I, I don't understand why everyone is against Batman because he's I was clearly the one who's like we're all people it's like the cuz the whole if you read that last issue from last week uh the the skip week one that introduced the whole conflict between Catwoman and Batman the idea is that Catwoman has taken over and she's empowered all of the dumbass thugs who work for all of the yes. big criminals to work for her instead and only to steal from rich people and uh, Batman doesn't like that because you know Batman doesn't rich. like crime and people still get killed. Uh, and they do. also, and he, also, and, and, he is also rich, but I don't think that that alone would be like no. You know, that's his, not that's not the story's driving force no, for him. No, but it is. The, but, I think his problem is that Selena is also training them in combat skills. Yes, they're all getting better, better, and then they're all gonna they like do. start being better killers and better like yeah. And, and this eventually, is, like a Pokemon, the Riddler will evolve into a Joker. Yes, that's how it works in Gotham. Yes, punch, yep. punchline will become punchline a will Joker. Evolve, punchline will evolve into a Harley Quinn. Yes, if you keep it long enough and you make and you give it a special stone. Yes, and uh, also in, in <laughs> it feed it the right type of berries. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and and you know the Bat Family will evolve into a Birds of Prey, a uh, much better story. Man, oh I, shit! I actually well, I liked Batman, so I but I did think it is a better story, yeah, and this, uh, I've really very this much so good. this was this has been on my radar since the day it wasn't when they were announcing the members of the team uh i love kelly thompson i love Same. leo romero and my one of my favorite things about this is jordy belair as the colorist but i love that it's colored like an 80s baxter comic it like it yeah. the coloring oh, is yeah. like very like all the skin tone is just like pink like you know for the caucasian characters and uh yeah. Yeah, actually well, I don't all think the, all the pinks are very pink. Yeah, they're very it's just like it's that weird There's like some interesting choices. Omega Men ones. Baxter series coloring. Uh and I think it's a really interesting This is this uh, is what you're talking about is these kind of panels. Yeah, yeah. You can't see what I'm saying, but they can. I can and I, I trust that they will. And uh I love how she writes uh, how Kelly Thompson writes Big Barda particularly. Hell yes, uh, I agree. That was my one that was the one character that I was like, this is not going to work. This makes no sense. Oh. Like, for me, I was like, I don't know how you're going to do this. She's too, you know, it's it's that Kirby overly serious yeah. type of character. And they've, and DC has gone so far to make the, like, when they released the Female Furies miniseries, it was like, oh, God, how do you unserious this character? And yeah. that, that story is, like horrifying yeah legitimately horrifying i think i finished it yeah it was it was really upsetting honestly yeah. and i mean for a comic book about super people but the smart thing about it is that it's become they they've in re-injected the character with the kirbiness of her origins but yep. also with the humor of kelly thompson so it's like it's not barda isn't trying to be funny but is actually very funny. The dialogue is is, exactly. is really great, and I love Cass Kane in it too. Barda is a um, straight man in this. Yeah, and uh, I even didn't mind Zealot, who is a character that I do not care about at all. Same. Um, but and the rationalization for Harley Quinn was actually very good. Um, cool, very good, very good comic book. I love it. Perfect. I just I do wish Vixen was in it, but whatever. <laughs> all right. I am not following Black Panther, but I'm excited that Deathlock is in it. Yeah. That is a choice that I thought was very interesting. And here's a thing that has not been really addressed in this. As an African-American character, he is very interesting. And being a... This is a, a story that I don't feel like anybody has gotten into. Mm. And I feel like they could really dig deep into this with a with a death lock. Didn't series. Dwayne McDuffie write a death lock series? He did. I and I mean he did. and I mean he did something I feel like I re I feel like I read this like two years ago and I don't remember anything <laughs> about it. 
but because I was going through long boxes and found those like square bound yeah. things. But it's a you know you're literally talking about the Marvel's story of a a black man whose body was taken over by a fucking sinister syndicate and like turned into a weapon. This is a, a metaphorically, it's a very powerful yeah thing that is very. You know, it's it's an upsetting thing that is very true to the real world, metaphorically. Yeah. Uh, and I guess even literally. Uh, so I'm I'm interested. I'm hoping that that's the direction they're going with this kind of thing. If they're putting it in Black Panther, but mm. who knows? Yeah. Um, what we have here is something I actually really liked, and am really surprised by because of how they changed things. This is Blue Beetle. Oh, I really liked Blue Beetle. I think this is an interesting idea. I feel like they're going a Cayman Rider route with this. Oh, cool. Like, the, yeah, when I look yeah. at this, I'm like, this is them trying to imitate a Cayman Rider type series because everybody keeps being like, well, this is my power and now my suit does this. And this is my suit. Look nice. at the toy that you can make out of this suit. Yeah. You could get it out of your gotcha machine. And I, I, I've heard decent things about the film i haven't seen it yet but uh I, everybody who i know who has seen it has said that it was one of their favorite superhero movies in a very long time it's a small sample but the only person i know who has seen it has seen it twice there you go so i mean that's I, a ringing endorsement for me yeah it's i just i'm not i'm not a i'm not a going to the theater person anymore yeah. i really just don't think uh, my life is, is no longer uh, I, my availability is no longer that that I it's can just been, leave and go do that kind of stuff. Beaten out of you, it really has. I mean, it, like so many things, like being in a band, like any of those kind of things. It's like it's a habit that I got out of. Yeah, where I was like, I thought that the second that COVID was over, I was going to be like, all right, what am I? What's my new project? What am I going to start playing? Who am I going to start playing for? What am I going to do? What, what's am I going to do a thing with myself? Or B's going to get back together? What am I going to do? And I was like. Yeah, you know what? I got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's good to know your limitations, and you're. Uh, I I keep adding more things to my schedule, and I'm kind of just like, uh, you know, I'm I don't have any time for uh, actual life. Yeah, someday I'll know my limitations. Yeah, well, I'd say you're doing pretty good. I think so. Let's see, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What about that? I flipped through it. It didn't really move me, but I did like the last Vampire Slayer thing, and I assume it's a continuation yes. of that. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, something about it didn't grab me, but it's it's cool, it's Buffy. If you like Buffy, you're probably digging it. And Doesn't, if you like City bad. Boy, you know what you're going to like? City Boy. City Boy. I do like City Boy, um, yep. and I'm, 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 I'm wishing the story was getting furthered a little bit quicker, but, um, but other than that, City Boy is just fine. Yep. Just fine. Just fine. Uh. Conan the Barbarian with a very verotic looking cover on yeah. it this week. <laughs> Looks like Glenn Danzig's Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. He's got like I'm going to say conservatively 400 abs. <laughs> he does uh, it, it is very much like a uh if you wondered what John Buscema's uh, Conan oh, would look like on course. glossy paper, you know um it's it's like that. It's good. I actually I I don't know why. Sometimes I buy Conan comics and I I don't really know why. I don't super like like I don't have the connection to the character that a lot of people do. Um, but I, uh, but I for some reason it. it it works for me when it when it works. And there have been times where it works, and uh, this is for me one of those times. It's to I, me Conan works when he's a fish out of water. Yeah. That's that's what I like. Like I liked the Savage Avengers stuff a lot. I liked I like him encountering weird situations in the future. I like what ifs with yep. Conan. Sure. Uh but really just like the down and dirty just dude with a sword just massacring people like I it It doesn't work for you. It well that's what this is kind of like. Yeah, it never really sits with me. I never like yeah. I never really care because uh, it's I don't know. It it just doesn't have anything I'm I'm looking for. I feel like this one I'm in for the arc, and then when the arc wraps, then I'll see where I'm at. I'll reassess. Sure. But I like it. It's a quality book. I like Jim Zub. Same. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, if I was listening to Manowar at the same time, maybe I would enjoy it more. Maybe yeah. I need to put on like 
glory to England or whatever. I feel like always sort of a poser when I buy Conan comics, though, because I'm so much like a superhero guy that like it's like Conan is like I'm like a sellout for for buying it because like I'm not. That's not my thing. Because you don't yeah. have you don't have the a tattoo of the Kings of Metal record on you anywhere. Correct. Yeah, That's yeah. Correct. That's exactly same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that album was called Hail to England. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. Uh, Concrete Jungle, Bad Omens. I don't know what the hell it is. It was actually kind of cool. Oh uh, yeah, I flipped through it. It looked kind of cartoony in an yeah. interesting way. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange continues to be fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Really liked it. It's great. Real good. Yep. Uh, nothing you need to know. I mean, you got Doctor Strange. It's a very typical tropey kind of thing. He's meeting his, uh, the war version of himself that has been. Yeah. The future death version of himself called General Strange. Right. He has been exposed to the horrors of the world magic wars. And he's basically like the war doctor from Doctor Who or, you know, uh, like, like, uh, I did not see what's that. What's the, what's the, the, the Hulk, he's oh the, the maestro, maestro from sure, the Hulk. Sure. He's you know he's any of these versions where things went so badly that he had to get actually really tough, and his his liberal ways didn't work anymore. Yeah, so the he, Hippocratic oath had to go out the window. He was like, "Fuck this," which you know, in the hands of a worse writer, would be literally the kind of trope that I would despise. Where yeah. it's like. Yeah, well, this version of Superman, he doesn't believe in truth, justice, in the American way because that stuff's dumb and boring and old. It's yeah. Like, no. But then I Tom Taylor to... takes over, and it's like, oh yeah, this actually is kind of okay. Write it well, and it's okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's all. That's all you need. My biggest complaint with any type of story like this, and it's not a huge complaint with this one because the General Strange character is so physically different from yeah. Doctor Strange. But when you start to get into like other versions of other characters, and you're just like, is this which version Ooh. is this? I can't tell. It's confusing. So when it gets visually confusing, we'll see. But Jed McKay has sure. uh, has I mean, earned uh, has earned some. Like if I liked Moon Knight, I'd be reading Moon Knight. If yep. if I was more into like uh, this grand cosmic Avengers thing that every cosmic <laughs> Avengers thing has to be, I'd be yeah, into yeah. that. Um, but I like this Doctor Strange. It's cool. Yep. He's read the comics. I like Jed McKay. Exactly. I I actually very much enjoy this, and I yeah the the look of Doctor Strange is awesome. I think yeah. I think the general Strange version is very cool. Yeah. Which in a lot of these like it's I would definitely say that it fits with Maestro, where it's like oh shit this like this is a very cool looking version of this future character in a way that it's like it you manage to get something iconic. Yeah. Like I think people will remember this character, and it's not going to be just a flash in the pan. I think this will definitely come back to haunt. There will this be an action world. figure of this guy. Oh, he will be a build a figure for the next Marvel Legends line. I guarantee it. Um, uh, Fantastic Four, another fantastic book. I think I will go out a limb and say that this is the best issue of this run. Mm. I really liked it. Wow, I wish I hadn't just flipped it then. Uh, I think the I mean, artist is finally so starting to get a handle on the characters in a way that like, they feel mm, like the yeah, characters, yeah. although they really need to get rid of that stupid handlebar mustache on the Human Torch. Oh but other than that, God, they do. the thing is starting to look like the thing to me. It's not like a guy who's orange and weird. Like It's like he looks like a monster, like but like expressive in the way that, that sure. he needs to be. And also just the story was really cool. Um, I do love an orange it, it, thing. I gotta tell you, like when he's when he's like brown and rock like, that's my least favorite thing. The more realistic he becomes, the less I like him. But I mean, it depends on the artist. We have if talked it, about, if it doesn't flow with with the art style, then orange doesn't look right. It's it's territory we've covered. I've covered uh, on the on the podcast, but the John Byrne mode of the fish, the thing looks like a starfish, is to me like ultimately. The, yeah. the physical representation of the thing. Yeah. He's not supposed to look like a person. He's supposed to look like a weird creature. A thing, and if so you will. Byrne always designed him as a starfish. And I think it like if you look at those, it works. Sure. And and uh and also just like the way his 
Especially the way that he consumes smaller fish with his anus. Like, I've always liked that about him. He shoots his stomach out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's disgusting. But it, it is disgusting. Um, but that's just biology, man. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I I think that this was really good. And it's very much a like, uh, it's it's basically an issue of Marvel 2 and 1 where he teams up with the rest of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's, you know what? That's a funny, that's really weird that you say that. That is the perfect fantastic four because of his power set because of the way that the thing is and the idea of how he's supposed to be an outcast and he's supposed to be you know all of that he's dealt with his issues at this point in fantastic four but i do love a fantastic four story that feels like the thing is teaming up with the other three people where it's sort of like there's a family and there's an outcast that kind of shows up and he's kind of a Han Solo, but he's, well, yeah, he is he's a, Han a Solo. Superman. He's like that kind of thing. He's the family. He's right. the uncle of the family. Like he's the one that's like, right. and, and the thing about the Fantastic Four, I think is kind of always done is that the Fantastic Four is always the four of them as a team. It's like, they're the team. They're always together. They don't like split up into, mm-hmm. there's not like a, I mean, and I know they do whatever, like I'm sure a person oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. could point out there's, to like, there are some great stories where they do that, but mm-hmm. sure. But, like, just imagine, like, Mr. Fantastic and the Human Torch, just the two of them. You don't Jesus. really see that, you know? Ugh. Like, it's, and there's there's a reason. And, and the thing is, of course, always the anchor of the Fantastic Four, and that's because he's yeah. Jack Kirby. Exactly. And, <laughs> and I mean, the other the other thing is that, I mean, it's, it's a fairly obvious thing, but because it, one of the most genius parts of the Fantastic Four is the fact that they have these complementary powers that in the way that they've been built over the years and people have figured out ways to use them and the different kind of crazy things that can be done with them, Mm. that they are a single unit of a superpower that becomes so much greater than the whole where like a super scroll is just not as good as the fantastic four. Right. You know, it's just not as cool and it just doesn't work as well because he's got a, switch off where they can combine their powers and asphyxiate someone inside a bubble because you can heat it up and get all the oxygen out of it or mm. you know if you want to hickman it you can put bubbles in their brain with their <laughs> fucking powers and you know those sorts of things and explode the atmosphere with Johnny Storm yeah or 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 block out the the sun like they did yes. with the uh in this run with yep. the visible woman turning the sun invisible. Yeah, amazing. She's just like how did that not exterminate life on earth? But, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's There's all a, yeah. good. I mean, hey, cuz comics are great. Yeah, That's comics why. are great. I love them. It's because comics are. I mean, fun. there's a thing where the in this a comic where the thing uses a plastic straw and a juice box to ter- determine his velocity, and I was like, this is definitely more of a Mister Fantastic thing. But like, you've been on a team with the guy for that many yeah, years, sure. like you're gonna pick sure, up a trick yeah. or two. Uh, Works, especially juice box related tricks. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a cool trick. <laughs> All I, right. I, yeah. Anyway, here's a shocking one. Ooh. Uh, this is uh, actually it's not shocking I knew I was going to like this from the get but uh, Fire and Ice oh welcome yeah welcome to Smallville very st- much stronger I l- knew I would like it but I did not think I would like it as much as I did you know very how, good you know how I knew I was going to like this because it no. Tamara Bonvillain. Oh, I said well, she did Birds of Prey too. I said, look no. at that. No, she did no, that's not. Jordy that Belair, Jordy Belair, right? But Jordy Belair is good. But Sorry. Jordy Belair just does not have a perfect track record. The way yeah. that Tamara Bonvillain, where yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. oh, hey, Tamara's on this thing. I it, wonder if it's going to be good. Of course it is. Like yeah. literally every goddamn book. It's like it's true. It is the way to know a quality book is to find out if she's going to be attached to it. Like she does not. She must say no to a lot of shit. Yeah. She must say no constantly. Totally. Which is a, even that Bendis power. Batman thing that turned into a weird White Lantern story was still yeah. pretty fun to read. <laughs> like, I mean, Nick Darrington and Tamara Bonville. It was. I mean, those two. Uh, yeah, it was I mean, like you couldn't. It was good to look at. The story was kind of dumb, but artistically, like, you, you, know, can't, you can't like, miss with that. But this is fun. It's definitely played a little more for laughs. I mean, the fact that there this cover is a throwback to that fucking Paris Hilton uh, reality oh, yeah, show from yeah. the early 2000s late 90s this I don't the, know yeah the simple life the with simple life yeah her and Lionel Richie's kid I can't remember what her name is Nicole Richie Nicole Richie uh, yeah the thing uh, it, it had like a sort of like 
Well, well, what I really liked about it was the vibe was very much Justice League 80s, like Keith oh, Giffen, yeah, yeah. J.M. DeMatteis. Like it Literally had the 1 that. in 25 variant for this is a Justice League International parody. Oh, cool. That's that's how much they were convinced that this was like that. Well, it's very much like it, and it's yeah. it, it's like it in a way that doesn't suck, which yeah. is like when something is like, it's it's like I was reading, uh, listening to an interview with a, a, a not to with John Dwyer from OCs and he was talking about uh, people doing Marky Smith from the fall. And he's like, there's only one Marky Smith from the fall, like doing Marky Smith sucks, but like you can do things that are kind of in the vein of it and hit, but it's like, it's hard to do. So the fact that they pulled off doing that with this is, is pretty good. And I love the art and um, I loved the, like, this is the, the co-creator of, uh, moon girl and devil dinosaur oh so cool well i loved martha and, kent in it yeah. it was like awesome that like martha kent is like that like when these yeah. characters that you realize like have been around since the first fucking appearance of superman but have almost no personality exactly. it's like that's you and, know you can do so much with an alfred or with uh you know right. someone like that and also the other uh character i really dug in it was elron um the robot yeah yeah from from the justice league they they elron lives with them and they have a beauty parlor <laughs> it's great it had a sort of love and rockets feel yeah, to it a little bit too I, I thought i i think one of my favorite parts of it is so in like a less talented writer would have done this book i can see exactly where this book could have gone yeah. and it would have been that they had no flaws that like Superman was fucking with them and that like all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, we're going to prove you wrong because you're stupid and this and this and this. And they would have done it in that way. And it's, but instead it's so clear that they are very flawed protagonists Yeah, and it makes it so much more interesting because they're, they already show themselves to be compelling and interesting as people but then they're making bad choices and they're doing interesting things that are going to, and not in a way that is just irritating. You know, they're not just like fucking up in a way that no one would fuck up They're You know, they're getting annoyed by things that people would be annoyed by. Yeah. And I I just think I find them very interesting and I find the story really fun. And also uh, like uh, fire looks like someone from Brazil. Like that is something that doesn't, she usually just looks like a, like a standard white superhero chick. And she does that. There's, there's a, they, they have like visual, Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dynamics and all of the characters in it have visual dynamics. Yeah, you have and multiple people uh, of color working on a book together too. Yeah. And uh, what so. was the other thing I was going to say really quick about it was um, I forget. Uh, you were going to say. Oh, the last page. If oh. you know me, uh, like you're just yeah, like, yeah. oh man, you didn't even have to do that. I already loved it. Yeah, and yeah. then it's just like, I, damn. I knew okay. that was going to. Just knew that was gonna can't be wait. Can't wait for the next issue. Uh, another book that actually is better than it should be. It would be Ghost Rider Wolverine. Fun. Real simple, fun story. It's just like a throwback to the olden days. Yeah, and speaking of action figures that will happen, that, oh, that Wolverine yeah. from this with the Weapon oh X helmet. God. Oh, man, that's a... It's that's so like, good. I can't believe it's not already. Like, they they, they did it as an action figure, an action and figure then it became... The, that's why they did the book. Like, it almost feels like they did it so that they could have an action <laughs> figure. But that said, this is a very enjoyable Wolverine Ghost Rider story, yeah. and I said it last time, and I think probably said it three times now, but it feels like reading uh, Marvel Comics Presents again, which sure. was one of my favorite comic series. I was obsessed with that run. I loved every tie-in. I loved the Venom stuff. I loved the Ghost Rider stuff. I loved the, the Wolverine You loved stuff. the one where the Hulk fought Hulk Hogan? Oh, my God. <laughs> one of my favorite comics comic stories of all time. I actually forgot about that one. Oh, my God, it's so <laughs> good. It if not. you ever want to read it, I carry it around with me at all times. Of course you do. <laughs> It's in my backpack. I promise. You know, if I was ever going to carry around a comic book, I've probably said this before too, it would be the Action Comics Weekly that has Dead Man and the Devil possessing Reagan and Gorbachev and having a having a fight at a summit. It was That's pretty cool. Absolutely bonker dues. That was a pretty cool. very funny, silly comic. Nice. I, I liked it quite a bit. I like it. Uh Godzilla, here there be dragons. That's the one with pirates. This is yes. Just just That's pretend fun. just pretend that the bikini atoll test took place before pirates were a thing. And <laughs> this all makes sense. Yes. Just and the, and, and the and the one of the pirates looks exactly like Johnny Depp in that movie. Yes. 
total coincidence. I yes, can't imagine why someone could, would I, would do that on purpose. And that pirates pose some kind of a threat to uh, some kind of kaiju. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and not just some kind of kaiju. Let's say the the alpha kaiju of all kaiju's Godzilla. That yes. will never. I mean, this is just this is sad. You can't a King Kong doesn't even really stand much of a chance against a. <laughs> Against a Godzilla, but in the best of Mecha Godzilla, they would lead you to believe that a Mecha Godzilla could fight a Godzilla. But uh, best of Mecha Godzilla is a goddamn good comic book. It is. I mean, there it's, is it's you full have of great uh, you have Victor Santos, you have Simon Gain, oh. you have uh, who did the first story in it? Uh, um, oh, John Lehman. Yeah, but the artist uh, Alberto Ponticelli. Ponticelli, Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, that guy. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I didn't the know art is him. like okay, cool. front to back. This comic is entertaining, and, and I would highly yeah, recommend yeah. it to any Godzilla fan. Godzilla, a, a G fan, if you will. A G fan, if you will. Uh, you know what else? Put. We got a little thing called Hunt for the Skinwalker. Oh, this one was uh actually I liked the art style in this. Uh and this it was felt like reading a Tops comic from the mid 90s. Sure, I could see that. I was really enjoying how indie like the level of indie that this book was felt like one of those like fly by night publishers in the 90s. I it might have just been because of all the American typewriter font in <laughs> the text. Like, there was so much use of typewriter font that I was like, I, I don't know. It was a throwback to yeah. a time when that was a thing that people did a lot. It, it's a great story. I mean, it's a it's a true story. I'm going to make big air quotes. Uh, <laughs> it is a it, it's a one of those things that if you like uh, if you if you're into the oh, what is what's the community? Uh, there's a there's a name for it. But like ufologists and all that kind of stuff okay if you're yeah. into that kind i felt of... like x files but not like government yeah. like it's not ev- like the you're following no. like people real people right i mean because this is based on a true story it is very much like blue book in the way that it is based uh, on actual yeah. actual again in quotes events some of the things that happened are documented to be absolutely true Events. Uh, there are things that are uh, anomalous that are very bizarre about the the Skinwalker Ranch story that are just nutter butters. Unfortunately, some of them could be. Is that a- where George Lucas lives? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, b- uh, named after his famous character Luke Skinwalker, <laughs> the famous uh, Jedi werewolf. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves him. He's great. Uh yes, he's he's great except for 3 days out of the year he is just a real <laughs> he is pain a in real the ass. He's a real bear. Oh, he's a, he is and a by bear I mean wolf man. <laughs> I mean actual wolf man. Uh no, it's yeah, it's it's a weird story entirely could be based on the fact that there's ur- depleted uranium on this ranch and people are getting sick from it. Mm. Weird things happen and everybody's getting sick and there's all sorts of crazy shit. Look it up if you don't know anything about it. It's 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 interesting. There's a documentary on Netflix about it that's pretty mm. cool. To the flicks. Um, let's see. I mean, listen, I'm not I'm not a WGA member, so I don't, you know, but I still don't really encourage people to support those motherfuckers. Uh, they don't pay people. But, uh, you know, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, hunt, kill, repeat. It's the final issue. Yes. The story wraps up with a, with a twist. It repeats. <laughs> <laughs> First there was hunting and killing. Now there's repeating. My God. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, it was not not a bad little out of the nowhere comic about Greek peop Greek gods. <laughs> about Greek people. <laughs> about Greek people. <laughs> My big fat Greek god <laughs> storyline. Uh, what about uh, what about the uh, the Joker? What about Jokey McJokester? He's just joking it up. Joking doing it his, up. His jokey best. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, just trying to get ahead, stay on top of the world, <laughs> as best as is as the joke he can. Okay, well, is does he ever go to the gathering of the juggalos? Has that ever happened? Ah, uh, it hasn't that I know of, but it definitely should. Well, DC needs to hire me so that I can write the <laughs> Joker goes to the gathering of the juggalos. Joker jug. <laughs> The Jugster. Jughead could go there too. Exactly. Oh man, what if Jughead? What if Jughead went to the gathering of the Juggalos? What if Juggalos were just Jughead fans? Oh man, that would be so cool. What if they all just wore those hats? 
instead. <laughs> How has the has that not become a thing for Juggalos that they're all wearing Jughead hats? I don't know. I think we need. I, to, think, I think we need that, to talk they, to the great Malenko about this shit. We do. We need to explain magnets and how these <laughs> hats are made. How how to make a joke head a joke head crown? Yes, you jug can, head you can glue a magnet to your head and put a magnet in the hat, and then it will stay on. Yes, forever. All right, let's talk about the Justice Society of America. Ah, uh, this is the one where the kids come back into the regular time frame, uh, and Jay Garrick realizes that he's had a daughter since the 1960s. Oh, what a dummy! But for some reason, even though it's 2023, she's still 13 years old. Hell yeah. That's Even though it goes. I know it, it was, it was, there were aspects of it that were cool. I will say it's one of two comics featuring Michael, the bee from the red bees trained bee group duo. And, uh, I don't know why Michael is the one that's in two comics this week, but he is, and he does a good job in both. Don't know. Uh, kill your darlings. I didn't like this. I have found it hard to read. I'm this, sorry. It's an interesting thing. This is a uh, this is one of them one of them things. Speaking of WGA, this is one of those uh, guys that used to do other stuff. Now he has to write comic books. Well, looking for another career, and I would say, go back to your day job. Yeah, I don't know. I was just like, I didn't get it, and there yeah, was. Some- so, I mean, honestly, I'm reading like how many comics? Eighty. Yeah, like yeah. it's I you know no, I read it and I thought it was okay. It um, needs to be a grabber for me. I didn't I didn't think it was terrible. I I do. Uh, this is weird. This I, I'm so fucking solipsistic. Um, but like literally, there is a book that I was working on that I stopped working on because I worried that this was a was too well trod an area. Like it was literally something that zombies felt very similar to this in tone and i was like i need to stop doing this because there are too many things that have done this story in the past Hmm. and this just did it again and i was like i think that was a good decision to stop what i was doing Hmm. because that story is not really gonna not really what i want uh but magnet oh Oh yeah, uh, it's it's J M De Mateus, and like uh, it's uh, set in the classic uh, Magneto Headmaster era of New Mutants, and it was just fine. Not anything just I'm like aching to revisit, fine. but uh, but I flipped through it and I understood what was happening. And as a person who read those comics, that's that's a ringing endorsement. Are you a person who read Masters of the Universe, Forge of Destiny? Uh, I will say that Javier Rodriguez cover grabbed me, and I was like, ooh, is this going to be the one I liked? And then I got, I opened it, and I was like, oh, it's just more of this. And, yeah, yeah. And, and no offense, like, if you're really into Masters of the Universe, it looks pretty good. I mean, that's that's the thing about these. I say that about that, all of, like, Transformers, well, any of it. exactly. Uh, this is for fans, and Tim Seeley is the su- the super fan of Masters of the Universe. Like this dude knows this shit inside and out. Good. So uh, if you like if you like Masters of the Universe, you're probably gonna love this series because he's yeah. very good at doing this stuff. It, it's not my thing. So it's not my that's, thing, that's, but it looks good for what it yeah, is. I agree. It just it's it's good for what it is, and that that sounds way more dismissive than it is. But it's just it's a it's a very specific fandom. It's like saying that I'm, you know, I'm not the audience for a Sonic the Hedgehog comic either. Right, exactly. But, but the it's people good who for fucking it like is. it, yeah. man, My Little Pony, it. any of that. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I could give the same review of this Moon Knight comic that yeah. you're about to put up there. Like, See, I like it, Moon Knight, I, and I don't know why I like Moon Knight. I, honest to God, don't understand why I enjoy Moon Knight as a character. Not a character that I ever cared about until that one run of um, Cancelled Guy. Uh, Warren Ellis. Thank you. Warren Ellis is wrong. That was a good one. It was so good. And and I mean... I would argue that one of the things that made that run good is Declan Shalvey. Uh, but also the fact that, like, yeah. he, honestly, to me, like, Moon Knight is visually boring. And uh, it's... And, and Declan it, Shelby 
made him it. yeah he fixed it he and then, fixed and then it the, and then nobody went back to that fucking style and now it's just like that's just another personality he has and i'm just kind of like eh, I'm gonna, well i mean you know but, but that's, that's but that it. was it's, the thing it's fine that, this is for someone it's not for me but it looks good for what yeah. it is jeb mckay who we just sang the praises of he's yeah, great yeah. you know like i like him a lot i i do enjoy this book but in defense of that i you could fix it because the Mr. Knight, that version of him was only part of it. The the, the one that you associate right, with the Warren right. Ellis run, that was just his, that was that character's origin story. But all of the other characters were there, the Khonshu element and like yeah. all the other things. But they were, even were more visually interesting too. They, they like were. that weird bird beak thing. And exactly. Like, that but stuff that was dynamic and cool. That looking. was the thing that he created, or at least he claimed, I actually asked him, I was, I was like, well, the thing is, I I was talking to him at some point. To and, him, who? Uh, uh, to uh, Declan, Declan Sheldon. Oh, cool. And uh, Sean had brought him here for yeah. some reason. He's been up here a few times. Yeah. I got him to autograph some Deadpool comics once. Nice. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, dude, uh, whoever did, uh, I assumed Warren Ellis had thought of that idea. I was like, man, he fixed that character so well. And he was like, that was actually my idea. Nice. <laughs> and so the idea of making him black and white in the world where everything else in reality is color uh, and he is black and white. I was like, that is so fucking cool. Yeah. And if everybody just stuck to that and stopped coloring him, stopped doing anything else, he just is like a void. He needs lots of gold moons uh, <laughs> that he, he could take off and throw. He needs orange stars. He, he needs, needs blue clovers he, he needs he to needs... throw a bunch of weird things that are not aerodynamic for some reason that always hit their target. Um, I that's know. actually a meme that's really funny the you answer is because it. he needs to fight a fucking werewolf because he was originally just a villain for werewolf by night but you know yeah. that's I mean he was designed to throw moons at the werewolf which is like wait isn't that good for a werewolf werewolves like moons what, what are you fucking doing bro good point maybe they were <laughs> half moons oh that's, that's why it. they had power oh. they're crescent that's why he's always throwing a crescent moon and not a disc of a moon a full moon here <laughs> take my full moon <laughs> wait it didn't do anything uh i love the idea that gotta he's gonna sharpen be like, these things oh shit a crescent moon i've got to turn back <laughs> that's what it is he's trying to confuse him yeah. uh my little pony camp big hoof and my little pony number 16 oh. these are both comics involving little ponies that belong to someone who has never been <laughs> never been identified has yet to be named but somewhere down the line in this series we're going to find out whose little pony they are i know who it is it's alan moore <laughs> fuck i hope not <laughs> Ooh, there's going to be a very disturbing issue of this coming up <laughs> yes uh it's it's a tie into lost girls unfortunately <laughs> it's a combination of lost girls and neonomicon so oof Mm, bad news. I can see it. Once upon a time at the end of the world. I, uh... I, 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 like, I, I am so close to dropping this book. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I just, this arc has lost me. And it's crazy because I'm so into Remender. I already have, well, it's uh, Jason Aaron. Oh, and, and Jason Aaron. Wait. What do you mean? No, once upon a time at the end of the world. Not, I, yeah, not, not it is Jason Aaron. No, I was thinking it's the same writer, and I was like, of course it's not the same writer, and I'm just a dummy. Mm. But yeah, no, Jason Aaron, you're not you're not keeping me on this. And I'm sorry I thought you were Rick Remender. My apologies. No, Rick Actually, Remender is a better writer than he is. Yeah, sorry. I don't I'm sorry. I, I don't I think dislike Jason Aaron I as a either. as a writer. I, I don't like I have think... anything against him. I just like this arc had me, the first arc had me, and the second arc totally lost me i mean scalped was fucking genius so i never read scalped Ugh, very sad but whatever yeah. you know what is great what peacemaker tries hard yes also the sec this is the second uh Ooh. appearance of michael the trained bee uh for this week i love the red bee renaissance <laughs> the bee renaissance the red renaissance uh we've got poison ivy number 14 man yeah. It has poison ivy in it. People like it. Uh, we've got Red Room Crypto Killers. Speaking of gathering your juggalos, it's mm. going to gather them all. Uh, we've got a book called Reflection. I, this is another one I tried. I liked the art in it. This is a book that I feel like I would actually like if I gave a chance to. Yeah, it I think it just too it was 
very, very, very thick and very dense. And yep. uh, it seemed interesting, and the art was good. But I, I was not, I was unable in the time allotted to give yeah. it the time it required to process. I agree. Uh, Scarlet Witch number eight. Uh, people like Joseph, and he is in it. I like Joseph, and I. You're not the only one. Oh, really? That's awesome. That makes me really happy. My my why one of one of our regular listeners, my friend John. Uh, why aren't more people into Maggot then? Why am I more people? Only... A lot of people are into yes. Maggot. Good. <laughs> he, I don't. But it's like one of those base. things where it's like there's lots of people that are into a character. It doesn't mean that the people making the comics with those characters are ever gonna. Yeah. figure the shit out yeah. and be like we could just have a maggot series that people would buy it no god yes. don't don't do that but i mean, I mean unless unless you get somebody who actually understands that's what i'm the, saying unless somebody has the south african dialect mm. for that particular i i used to know the name for it it's a africans well, no there's a there's a there's a patois there's a like a, a specific like like inner city lingo and it has a name okay and that's how he spoke in the old books and for some reason joe, joe kelly Ke- joe kelly knew how to do it yeah. he had that on lock and there was this specific way he spoke that was so, really compelling and i really enjoyed reading just his get dialogue. someone british to do it they can do dialect yeah i mean it's i think really you would just at it. except I mean, for maybe, they can't do american dialect can we well. just get uh, uh ninja from that yeah that uh no i think he's been pretty sol- solidly canceled oh good what for uh sexual assault ah jesus christ i don't i i, I may be speaking out of or turn. for that at the very least he's been accused chappy. of it yeah he was in that movie chappy so that's one thing that he should be canceled for that movie sucked um <laughs> What if so Short what Circuit this? was, like, really extreme? What if you cross it Short Circuit suck? with Rock'em Sock'em Robots? Well, it was, it that was, was real steel, though. Oh, yeah. No, this was what if you crossed uh, uh, Short Circuit with RoboCop? Mm. And it was like, then you get a shitty movie, I guess. I will stand behind Real Steel. That movie is much better than you might think. That movie is amazing, yeah. and it should have been called Rock'em Sock'em Robots. It should have. It definitely the motion should have picture. been the Rock'em Sock'em Robots motion <laughs> the picture. The motion picture. Absolutely. I, I miss people calling things the motion picture as well, I Yeah. Think. Star Trek the motion picture? Yeah, that was a good time. Superman the motion picture. Like all it's of true. Those. It was called the Superman yeah. the motion picture. Uh, more stuff needs to be called the motion picture now. Yes. Uh, I... I feel like well, if Chappie was called Chappie the motion picture, would you have a favorable? Yes, review I would. Of it? I would like it a lot more. Jesus, even Superman Four: The Quest for Peace, the motion picture. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but man, Chappie, how dare they have I, that scene from Short Circuit Two where he gets painted up by the gang, and then it's like I've, I've actually every never single seen, scene. Uh, I've yeah, never seen so Chappie. derivative. Come on, guys. I'm sorry, and. Uh, I've never District seen District 9 was so good. District 9 was amazing. So good. I saw that movie on 9 9 it. 2009. The reason why oh. is because I had just moved to Chicago and the movie there was a movie called 9 that was like about like a yeah, wicker yeah. little yeah, guy. Yeah, that was looked really depressing. It, it, I think yeah, it was. And it premiered on 9 9 2009 and I was like I'm going to go see 9 on 9 9 2009 but I was I had just moved to Chicago. I didn't know where all the theaters were and I tried to find one that was playing <laughs> and none of the theaters I could find were playing but one of them was playing District 9 and I was like, well, that's pretty close, close. enough. Close enough. So good I job. saw District Nine on nine nine two thousand nine. <laughs> good job. I, I did do a good job. Uh, we've got Joe Schmalky's new book, uh, Seven Years in Darkness. You our, know our buddy Joe. I need to go back and read all these. You do. I, I, this I, is a really good one. This like I mean I like pretty much everything that he does, but uh, yeah, I like the. I think this is a particularly good story. Like, I haven't dug into one of them in a little while, uh, like because I'm always just like ah, oh, Joe Schmoggy, it's great, and then yeah, I just yeah. want to say Joe Schmoggy, it's great, but like this one, I was like, okay, like what's happening in this book, and it's it's very well edited. Yes. F- yeah, yeah. And it's very well drawn and it's very well colored um and and it's very well written i like it it's good I'm, it's I'm good and i need to yeah. i'm i'm now curious to go back and 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 reread the other earlier ones yeah i feel like uh, i mean listen this He's, isn't the, this isn't the goal of comics the goal of comics is to have comics but i feel like if anything that he has is going to get like optioned for a movie yeah. it's this like i look at this and i'm like I, I hate it when I have this feeling, but I did look at this and I was like, man, 
this would make a really good movie. <laughs> like it, I could see my only thing I could is cast it, this in my mind. <laughs> it would be very dark. And I would have a hard time. Like I have a hard time with movies that are palette wise, very dark like that, like a lot of shadows and things. Yeah. Like that. I mean, like you could do a cool noir take on it, but like you need that contrast in, in my it mind. Somehow. It's, it looks like all of the cave scenes from, uh, from that dragon movie. Uh, Ooh, Pete's Dragon. <laughs> yes, let's <laughs> let's just call it Pete's Dragon. The one where they were all fighting dragons in the uh, How to Train in, Your Dragon uh, <laughs> in England. It's it's like the world has been decimated by these dragons. Oh wait, under. what is that movie called? Breath of Fire. Is that what it's called? Sure. It's. I know which Something movie like you're that. talking about. Uh, that's now. a that's a Super Nintendo RPG. I'm just gonna call it that, but it's something. Yeah, else. no, I know which. Uh, I know which one you it mean. It has uh, Christian Bale in it, and yeah. it has uh, that other guy. It's got a bunch of dummies. I can Google fun. it. That was a fun movie. Yeah. yeah, maybe you should. It'll probably annoy people. On Christian the Bale dragon movie. Uh, but we also have a Shazam. Ah, uh, Shazam's cool. <laughs> I like it. It has uh, it has space monkeys. Well, it has Gorilla City monkeys, and they go to space. Yep. It's cool. And also Metamorphos in it briefly, sort of, almost. I just like Dan Mora, and I like when he draws Metamorpho, and I wish that Metamorpho was in more comic books. Of course. he's so cool. Uh, You know who else is cool? Sheena, because she's queen of the jungle. And the classroom. (laughs) And the classroom. (laughs) And queen of having boobs that stick out of everything. Yes. So dynamite is all over it. Uh, Silk. This is this is probably the best silk run like of all of them honestly. This is the first time they've done something clever with it and it makes me sad because she was really awesome when they first started there was some problematic stuff and dumb shit but but like the the series was good and then they just released a bunch of very boring series that I did not care for and it feels like a repeat of Spider-Woman where like Spider-Woman is this character that they would release two or three runs of garbage comics and then one would just be absolutely awesome and you couldn't convince somebody to buy it because they'd release so much garbage Mm. and it makes me sad i wish they wouldn't do that (laughs) you were pretty close with that movie it's called rain of fire rain of fire thank you rain of fire (sighs) i fell into a burning rain of fire and matthew mcconaughey was in that right sure probably sounds plausible or that guy from Cheers. I can't tell him apart. Woody. <laughs> uh, Woody Guthrie, right. Yes. Oh, man. You want to read the saddest thing you've ever read? Read the Woody Bu- Guthrie biography. There's a one chapter in that that is hands down the saddest thing I have ever read in my life. And is I won't. I will not tell you about it because mm. it will depress you. Okay. I don't want to hear about it. It's probably very much like Push by Sapphire. I don't um, know what that is. Uh, it's okay. It's it's a manipulative book about making people sad. Uh, uh, what about uh, Silver Surfer Rebirth Legacy number one comic book? I think that if you are extremely nostalgic for that time frame and those creators, then perhaps you'll like this. But I don't think it's a guarantee. There is a um, very specific comic series that this is throwing back to and it was not very popular i like it was a it was a run of shit that like i don't know anybody who bought it at the time speaking of needing editors i would love to go back in time to the marvel bullpen of 1990 whatever and be like don't name him something that rhymes with penis just don't do it it's a bad idea (laughs) his name is now penis bell forever yeah yeah i agree I mean, I who I thought get, that was a good idea? But what about just as I'm, soon as you see it written, it just it's penis. It is penis. Anyway, sorry. And also, si- oversell like, my joke. What about this? What about this dum dum? Uh, what about him? Which dum dum? Uh, the guy that's with him, uh, the son of Captain Marvel. His name is Penis Vell. No, what is his name? Genus Vell. Well, no, what is his dumb name? Legacy. Is, that's thank you. I think that's why Legacy. it's called Silver Surfer so Rebirth. Fucking Legacy. stupid. I hate that superhero name so much. I, yes. I, also, I would rather his name be Penis Bell. <laughs> I would be like, oh, hey, it's Penis Bell. That's great. That's way better than Legacy. That yeah. is 
stupid. That's like naming uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, well, what is it? it's? That's the thing. Is it's Captain Marvel? It's the name is cursed. And anytime you name a character Captain Marvel, then at some point you have to rename that character something else, and it's always dumb. Yeah. Photon, Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, like These are dumb names. Are dumb Just names. let her be Captain Marvel. That's the name. Yeah. Shazam. It's a fine magic word. It's dumb yeah. as a superhero <laughs> name. I'm sorry. Mary Marvel. Also kind of a dumb name. Like, I mean, of all of them, it's the best one. But Mary Marvel, at least there's alliteration. And also, her name was always Mary Marvel. It wasn't, she was never Captain Marvel and became Mary Marvel. So my point is moot on that one. But, you know, binary. Ugh. Remember ugh. that? Binary. What a, <laughs> that, that is insane. Come on. That is absolute insanity. Uh, speaking of names that aren't all that good, but uh, luckily have carried through, we've got Spider Gwen. Yeah, that's really hanging hanging on there, but they can't rename her anything else because it stick. Ghost Spider did not work. Yeah, although I think that is technically what her name is. But everybody was like, "You but, mean Spider Gwen?" Yeah, Spider Gwen. <laughs> like, yeah, that it makes more Gwen. It makes more fucking sense. I, yeah, this comic I'm, was not very good. I'm fine at this point with that. Yeah, yeah, they're they're trying to make a uh, white fox a thing, and it's not, just not going to work. Yeah, and I actually do like some of those uh, Marvel like uh, like yeah. the Asian like yeah I, greater I, universe. Was, yeah, I don't know. There's like a overall kind of, um, but so nothing against the character. I just they're, like they're, this thing where it's like two they're characters. Called agents of Atlas, unfortunately. But really, yeah. okay. Agents uh, of Atlas. They're whatever. taking over the Agents of Atlas moniker. That's uh, and that, sadly uh, we don't have our, our Gorilla Man in there anymore. Uh, Gold Ken. I know. Um, but yeah, I just um, the whole like here's a comic that costs six dollars or five dollars or whatever it costs. And yeah. It's just like here's an excuse for character X, character Y to fight. Yeah, yeah. It's just a contest of you champions. Know, thing. It works or it doesn't. If you yep. really care about the characters, it works. If you don't, it doesn't. Yep. Uh, have you ever wanted to see uh, EVD nine or? T, yeah, 99, yes. EV99, the torture droid from <laughs> uh, from Jabba's palace, kick the shit out of Lando Calrissian. Guess what? You get to see it right here. Beats up Lobot and Lando in the same issue. Nice. Uh, we've got another dark droids with an evil C-3PO. It's a big spoiler, but uh, there you are. Yeah. He's the oh, most man. evil of all of them. Of course he is. If you're going to have somebody... If you want somebody to become an evil Sith, it's going to be Jar Jar. If you want someone to become a possessed evil robot, it's going to be C-3PO. Yeah. He He's does see. Want. Is this the one? There's another one. Is the one that you want? There's another one where he does an evil thing to a beloved Star Wars character no. from one of the two dark droids that came out. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps the actual Dark Droids comic. It's the one that has C-3PO. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's Dark Droids number two. Is that next? That or was. That, yeah, that I was mean, it. I just combined the two of them. C-3PO. Sure. Yes, he pants his R2-D2. Sort of. Into space. <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> uh, Star Trek Defiant number seven. Steelworks number four. It's still pretty good. Survival. It's a comic book. Mm. This is... This is one of the rare misfires for me in the Dark Horse uh, pile of comics that I have been very much enjoying. Mm. It's not a terrible misfire. It's a book that is good enough, but I'm just not I'm not following it. It it may have gotten better. I haven't read since issue two, I think. I didn't read it. Yeah. And I didn't read it today. Uh, but man, Dark Horse has a slate of new stuff coming out that I'm just like, fuck, this all looks really, really good. Nice. That's so good. they continue to be doing stuff I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a book that is too depressing for me to continue reading. Swan songs. Mm. Hey, uh, we've got another actor who wants to write comic books. Jay Baruchel doing tear us apart. Yeah, I. This was one that didn't really grab me too. It's like kids fighting, beating the shit out of each other in an arena, kind of thing. Yep. I don't know. That's your thing. I just like, I don't know, blood and guts. It doesn't really get me very much. I bought that Conan comic. That's all you're getting out of me. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, the unbelievable, unfortunately mostly unreadable and nearly unpublishable Untold Tales of I Hate Fairyland out today. And uh, I don't understand the main series 
or follow the main yeah. series. I shouldn't say I don't understand it. I don't follow. The main There's series. not much so, to like, understand. Yeah. So this one, I'm just kind of like, oh, I should have looked at it to see if there was cool art in it. This cute little girl beats the shit out of adorable little things. In does she land. swear when she does it? She sure do. But I got to say, this is probably one of my favorite issues of this comic. There are some really fun stuff in these little minis. There's I some like the art. art. There's some crazy, crazy, silly shit. It reminds me of like Joan and Vasquez type stuff. Like Sort of adventure time, maybe a little there's, too. There's definitely some adventure time in there, but there is 100% some Johnny the Homicidal Maniac mm. in this thing. that like It feels oh. like reading it's Squee. F- Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. That's great stuff. Um, we got Weird Work number three. I like Weird Work. I like. I bought it's these great. when they were Kickstarter, so I feel bad that I'm not supporting them as yeah, yeah. newsstand books, but I don't need two copies. I mean, that's that's the thing about Kickstarter stuff that gets released by companies. It's yeah. like, eh, yeah. you know, people aren't going to buy it twice. Yep. Says the guy with a. It's like your audience exactly. already. Well, yeah. for sure, but your your fan you're base. putting out copies exactly. that, of the the issues. You're doing it in a different way. But you know what else we got here? What we've got an immortal X Man. Oh yeah, this is more of that stuff that depresses me. Yep. So let's skip over to the last thing we have. That's right. Regular X Men number twenty six, which also depresses me, but slightly less. You didn't read it then. I read it. Uh, did you? Yeah. I mean, it's not depressing. It's just stupid. It's just yeah. silly shit. I mean, I-, I thought it was interesting the way that they're drawing Tony Stark in this issue is bizarre. He I... looks like. I mean, I know that there he's kind of a ragged alcoholic at this point, but man, he looks like a ragged alcoholic. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like him being in the x-men comics i it feels lazy to me it's it, like well i write iron man and i write x-men well, so i'm gonna have them team up it's I like mean, just write the two comics man but like that's not the thing i mean I, listen i'm, I'm gonna have I'm tony gonna, stark design sentinels like i mean i'm blowing back because i think the sentinel thing like because the, it's stolen technology where they stole the the sentinel tech they need to get in there this is a fake wedding where he's uh, Emma Frost has a wedding band that is like faking her being I get it human yeah. so, so that she doesn't get masking her mutant powers she doesn't get detected by any of the the sentinels here's my thing though in the 80s this guy called Obadiah Stane mm-hmm. did a corporate hostile takeover of Stark Industries and then repurposed the technology for his own evil ter- purposes and then Tony Stark fought back from alcoholism to become the hero he was always meant to be and it's like he's also supposed to be really smart so now the idea that this is just happening again cuz some other guy did it vaguely or it just doesn't work for me. I think and you're going to find that 99% of people alive right now did not read that series. Well, <laughs> because I do, I, I I would actually counter that because there's epic collections and there's all sure. these things and there's it's more accessible than ever sure. and lots of these people that haven't read them have I mean, they uh, sure it may be ex- more Marvel back issues sell than I'm any gonna, like DC or that, anything like you're that. You're absolutely correct, you know? but um, but I, I will have. Read I will it. definitely say that for Boy. myself, I find I find comics of that era to be hard to read. Mm-hmm. I find them unpleasant to read. I find because we have moved forward in a way that we now understand how to write for art being in comics and the the sort of uh dated uh stan lee wolverine with his powers of adamantium skeleton has this thing and this you'll find him down at this and it's just like this this overly flowery nonsense where it's always telling too much it's always saying more than it needs to say and it's it's the kind of feeling that you're like you're reading that type of comic book. This it's just being updated, and I feel like all of these stories. I mean, you look at Marvel Superman; you have a hundred times Superman has had the same story told, and it just gets updated every ten years or whatever. I do. I, I there is merit to what you say. However, my counterpoint would be that. Number one, Marvel Comics predicates itself on being one continuous storyline across 
I would, an infinite I would say amount that of titles. That is a false. That is a false claim, dude. There's whole books about it. All the Marvels by Wolk. Sure, that's like literally about it. How it's like a one. It's the longest narrative that's ever been done in in published history of fiction. But I think, but we're I think we are currently seeing that fall apart. But the idea, I and I agree, it does fall apart because like, now now when you, you but you're saying that stories. like stories are so much better now. So if they're better now, then why? Why are it, it, they having this character fall into the same dumb trap that he fell into 30 years ago? Because like, you all, because, because it's there just are like only two stories to tell man versus nature and man versus <laughs> a stranger comes into town and man versus nature or whatever it is. I'm just saying you could change it in a way. Whereas like, so look at what Zdarsky's doing in Batman where it's like gang war. Okay. Gang war has been done like 12 million times in different yeah. com- comics, but he is doing it in a way that tweaks it a little bit and makes it interesting but I feel this time and I think that feel like this is being she, tweaked I think that's crazy. I do I do they the only tweak is that they're using his arm is that it became an x-men comic I mean, and they're building Sentinels. And, and it, Sentinels. But, like, that idea, like, Tony Stark, this genius, doesn't have a way to, like, prevent his shit from becoming murder weapons. Like, that's his whole deal. It's, like, his whole deal. I mean, seriously, though, like, yeah. I mean, listen, you can say that about all comics. That's a, you could. That's a long I'm story. I'm just it's saying. Like, this guy, Superman, he can't see when Kryptonite's coming. He can see everything. He can hear Lois Lane when he's in Alpha Centauri. Well, but you have you to know, write the story in a way where it makes sense that he doesn't see it coming. Sure. When and it's just like this. Jimmy you Olsen. You hate the X-Men. I'm just... <laughs> I, I, know, I, I just say Jerry Duggan. But um, the, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think... You hate this X-Men run. You're, you I are... I do. I didn't, I didn't entirely the entire way, but I absolutely you do. You are compromised. Um, I do hate it. And, uh, and, I, and I'm not... I can't take your opinion... I can't change yours, but no, you I can't. will. Uh, you can't change my opinion that this X Men run is fun and that the Krakoa era was fun. I'm sorry, the Krakoa I, era I have had potential. Both of them. Had potential. I've enjoyed there were both of these stories eras. within it that were good, and I did everything I could to try to enjoy it. <laughs> um, you are not the average comic consumer. You have to admit this is true. <laughs> this is this definitely is, true. This is that that. But whole it's the thing. things where we agree so strongly that make me have a, a hard time on the things where we don't sure, agree strongly because, sure. like, like that Smallville thing. Like, yeah, I would yeah. never have expected that you would have no. liked that comic as much no, as you did. I loved and, it, and I loved it. But I mean, and we both loved it. So. The idea yeah. that you don't see where I'm coming from on this, whereas I am talking to X Men fans who do see where I'm coming from. Okay, but again, uh, here's I just have to say this I, as a my only my the only way I come to anything is as a musician, and so I come to all of this stuff the same way. Where, like, when somebody comes out and they're like, "Look, it's Animals as Leaders. Listen to this band." It's like that wasn't written for people. That wasn't written for. A, a person who likes music it was written for musicians and like more stories are now written for people they're not written for comic fans I and disagree. i feel like that's i feel like there is a place for i that. think that they are niche written and i think that they are being written for for you, perhaps in this instance. However, it definitely is being um, so I uh, uh, my my current favorite person to talk about X Men comics with is uh, DJ Bobby Shax from yeah, yeah. Uh, fr- from MPG, and he's on before me, and he loves X Men com- loves X Men comics, and he actually emailed me, and he was like, "Check this out! Like this, it was a Chris Claremont eighties one, one where uh, where uh, right after Colossus dumped." after Secret Wars and he dumped Kitty Pride and then Wolverine and Nightcrawler took him to the bar and they like got him drunk and they were kind of like showing a him that bad era. Okay, but it's not it's not a bad era. It's an era that like I personally loved for the really? X-Men and that Shax also was like this is the X-Men to me where they like have distinct personalities and are and and this is how Wolverine feels based on how Wolverine is, and this is how Rasputin feels because this is how he is. And now it's like we just need to get them to the tent pole because we're writing comics be- for 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 You're right. arcs I, I agree. and not for stories. And so you get things where a character whose entire publishing history is about being this like innocent character that kind of like. 
um, you know, obviously grows that up or whatever, but 70 like 70 years old, but now. she's also just like straight up, like murdering everybody. It's like, that's totally out of character for Kitty pride. It just is. It, she can be jaded. She can be changed different. She's obviously not 13 years old anymore, but like she has a characterization and it is not pulling people's brains out of their noses. It just isn't. I mean, okay. Listen, I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna change your mind. But the 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 whole being driven to the brink of the, the idea that they have pushed her. She became an alcoholic. They then pushed her to the brink of insanity, and then she went over the top. And she was trained to do so by that, Wolverine. Why I mean, are they all jumping to all this about... conclusion? They've all died and been reborn so many times that you were literally reading stories about clones of clones yeah, of yeah. clones. But for some reason, in this instance, oh, they're all dead. And I have to murder everyone. Like, any character that's been through what Kitty Pride has been through has been like, let's make sure they're dead before we start pulling people's brains out of their ears. I, I think... The, the uh, characters sure. that I know, and there are certain X Men comics coming out that do feel like they are written by people who understand that. Like I think X Force is but written you that also, way. You also know that she's not Kitty Pride anymore. She's Shadow Cat with a K. So that is a different person. Yeah. Okay. But like you know, like <laughs> X Force works you for know me. That every seven years, we're completely different people. So if you're going to take this clone <laughs> thing and be like, "Oh, look, this isn't the same person," you're not the same person you I'm were seven years ago. One you're entirely new cells. And I'm cloning myself as we speak. But I, I am I am 100 percent <laughs> willing to read an X Men comic that's based on that's all. It's not like I don't want to read it anymore because they're dead. I just like in their clones. I just I just want it to feel like the characters that I read that were established by these this the core of the comics and Marvel wants me to be reverential to that era but then wants to sell me something that isn't and I don't understand why. And X-Men is the perfect example of that where Moon Knight that guy read the Moon Knight comics and that Moon Knight reads like Moon Knight X-Men, it reads like somebody who's like, I think it's cool when brains come out of noses. I think it's cool when, uh, you know, whatever, you know, like, I, you know, I just. I think and it's I, cool when brains come out of noses. Well, you might. And, and that's why you're a fan of the Mummy series. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry we got and so also far down Brandon this road, Frazier. But, Yeah, I know. It's going to take forever uh, to upload this. I'm sorry. Now. I'm so sorry. I'll shut up now. Okay. No one anyway, wants, no one it's wants to hear fine. this except, except people. Uh, this is, this will never resolve itself. But follow us at um, Actually Comics. And buy things from CoastCityComics.com. Yeah. Uh, if you, the only way to resolve this is to buy more X Men comics <laughs> from me true. than you buy older X Men comics. We have both on the website. Yeah. And this way, you can cast your vote <laughs> <laughs> in our 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 viewer poll in our ongoing our, argument. Our, we're going to do an X poll. <laughs> yes. Perfect. And anyway. we'll decide whether Tristan is right or wrong based on your votes. Exactly. <laughs> You're welcome to prove me wrong. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening. I, I mean, Jesus, yeah, my favorite my favorite era is the early 2000s, so what am I even talking about? That's great. My mm. favorite, honestly, my favorite X-Men comic of all time is called X-Men Legacy, and it's the one that oh, Mike yeah. Carey wrote that had, like, they, they only gave him Rogue. And they're like, you can have Rogue and no one else. I think Gambit might have been part of it. And he brought in, like, Frenzy and stuff. I love that run. Love it. I like it's when great. I like when Juggernaut uh, demolished Sammy, the weird little fish guy's home, and oh. uh, and he was like, "Oh, you're getting abused. I'll go fuck up your whole family." And Sammy's oh. like, "You're a violent monster. I hate you." <laughs> That's he right. Was like, you're Wait, doing... is that Chuck Austin? Yeah, it was, nice. but it was amazing though because it was like this moment of him. He's like, "Oh, you're doing that thing. You're this is cycle of violence shit. You're just being violent to him." Because he was violent to me. No, I want to stop this. And it's like, oh, shit, weird little chicken guy. You're the right guy. What was the comic from this week where um, someone was beating up someone? They're like, you're a mutant. And, oh, and yeah. they're beating and they, him up. They and, had like vitiligo or something. Yeah, no, yeah. They had uh, alopecia. alopecia. And they were like, I'm not even a mutant. I just have alopecia. And I was like, that resonated with that one scene yeah, yeah. resonated with me more on a gut level as an X-Men thing than Oh, I listen, if that's if that's your take, 
I 100% agree with you. I think that that is the thing that we're not seeing enough of is is interpersonal moments that are that that's are on entirely that street my level. thing and i and i definitely do agree with that yeah it's just it feels like tentpole to tentpole and that's not what i like anyway blah 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 fair enough anyway we'll see you next week good night everybody bye you love us <laughs>